G'day you wonderful person. Today, I found an awesome exercise for us to do. We'll be making a quiz game that'll look something like this. Yee! Yeah! Oh yeah! I'm Andrew, and welcome to You Code Things. Before we jump into the exercise, I want to thank those of you who have subscribed. I love all of you. This exercise is the first exercise on the GoForSizes website. John's Go exercises and screencasts are amazing, so I thought it'd be awesome fun to try it in Rust. Make sure you go to GoForSizes.com and check out all his other exercises. So what are the steps? One, we're going to read a file with two columns, questions and answers. We're going to separate the columns and the answers with a tab. Two, prompt the user with the question and then check the answer. Three, add a time limit for each question. The complete code is in the description and it's way more documented than what I'm going to show in this video. I was surprised by how short the code actually ended up being. New Rust binary with cargo new. Import the file system module and the IO module. I will delete that later, it was a mistake. We're hard coding the quiz file name, opening the file, and reading it into a string. We can now make that file and read it. Something horrible happened next. I assumed I was placing tabs between the question and answer, but my editor was replacing my tabs with spaces. This was bad. This was really bad. <laughs> Iterators are awesome. So we're going to take our file and split it into a vector or list of questions and answer pairs. For each line, map this function or closure over it changing it from a string to a pair of strings. And we can collect that iterator into a vector. Let's write a function that tests the user. It will take a question and answer, prompt the user and return true or false. We've done this code in other videos, but let's quickly go through it. Print the question and flush it to the screen. Read a line from the user, trimming the new line, then compare the user answer to the actual answer. To test each question, just map the iterator with the test question function. Pass in the question and answer, and the function does the rest. Then we can use filter to only keep the true values. Finally, we count it and change the variable to score, because we're counting the score. I'm sorry. I made another mistake. Filter takes a reference and you can't check true or false on the reference, you've got to dereference it to be true false. This works, but I also want a total score so that the user knows how many questions there were. Let's just count the total number of lines. Oh yeah, it works completely now. It just doesn't have that running out of time feature. The program blocks right here. This freezes everything and waits for the user. The only way to like cancel this is if we use another thread, something running on the side that isn't blocked. Let's use an MPSC or multiple producer single consumer and then use threads. Making a channel is as simple as the channel method, returning a transmitter and receiver. You don't need to name them this. We want to take the user input in another thread and send it to the receiver. Move the user input code into the thread and send the buffer through the transmitter. The receiver waits for the timeout, which is a duration in seconds. We change the result type into an optional type using OK. If there is something in the option type, we want to map a function over the user input, checking it with the answer and then changing that into a true or false value. Now the type signature has a timeout as well as an option return. So now we must repair our question answer iterator to reflect these changes. We want to stop everything if the user runs out of time. So we'll take from the iterator while the value is some thing. Once the user fails to respond, everything stops. Below this take while, the optional type 
is always something with a value inside, so we can unwrap it and keep everything else the same. Adding a little or else method lets you notify the user of the time expiring. We just need to rewrap that error since we're cheekily using this function for a side effect. And that's it. We had some highs, we had some lows. Coding just makes you feel alive. Now go make your own awesome quiz games. See you next time.